The legal battle that began last June has ended in favour of the DP World Tour, and from all indications, Live Golf might be coming to an end. How was the case decided? Will the rival tour be able to survive this major blow? In today's video, we will be bringing to you the intriguing details of the long-standing war between the European Tour and the Live Golf players. Stay tuned and keep on watching to find out more. The Live Golf defectors on the DP World Tour are to pay a fine of £100,000 within 30 days of losing their arbitration hearing. The Live Golf players had initially been awarded a fine and a two-week suspension from the DP World Tour when they decided to play at the inaugural Live events last year without permission from the European Tour. However, the penalty was put on hold when Ian Poulter, Adrian Otegi and Justin Harding quickly filed an appeal challenging the verdict. This allowed the Live players to continue participating in the DP World Tour without any punishment. The appeal later concluded earlier this month, and it was against the Live defectors. The appeal panel referred to the actions of the players as a serious breach of the code of behaviour of the DPWT regulations. It went ahead to dismiss all the appeals against the decision taken by DPWT Chief Executive Keith Pelly and concluded that each of the appellants is to pay a fine of £100,000 within 30 days of the notification of this decision. The independent UK-based panel of Sports Resolution, which consisted of three persons, stated that Pelly had acted entirely reasonably in refusing releases. Pelly responded to the judgment of the panel by saying, We welcome today's decision by Sport Resolutions, which upholds our regulations and our ability to administer them. We are delighted that the panel recognised we have a responsibility to our full membership to do this, and also determined that the process we followed was fair and proportionate. Pelly went further to say that the details of the decision will be carefully considered by the board and tournament committee, after which their legal advisers will take the appropriate action in due course. The panel came to this conclusion during the Augusta National Tournament, but most of the players affected had zero knowledge of it, as they all claimed to be focused on the game at hand. I was going to look at that and deal with all that after this week. My main focus this week is on the tournament, said Reed, who opened his Masters account with a 71. Once tournament week starts, especially majors, I don't look at anything, read anything. When the tournament starts, I have blinders on, Reed added. Now let's go back to the beginning. The controversial tour was launched in 2021 under CEO Greg Norman and it held its first tournament at the Centurion Club outside of London on June 9th to 10th. The Saudi-backed series has faced a lot of criticisms, starting from its major sponsor to its attitude towards the sport. Most people are of the idea that the Arab Kingdom is trying to use the game of golf to cover many of the inhuman activities that they have been engaging in. Norman has responded to these claims by saying that the Saudi Arabian regime is changing the culture within their country, and this is very different from sports washing. Norman argued that Liv was independent and it doesn't answer to the crown prince. Then, another set of golf fans feels that it's wrong for players to choose money over golf legacy. Some of the top golf players such as Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods have openly criticised the Liv defectors and labelled them as rebels. Meanwhile, there have been predictions that the Liv tour will not last. Just like the DPWT, the PGA has suspended all the players who have pledged to Liv and threatened future suspensions for anyone who participated in Liv events. This move by the PGA Tour has serious consequences, and the Live golfers have cried out because they are no longer being awarded points. This means that even if a player like Phil Mickelson is winning on the Live Tour, his ranking will keep on dropping. This is another major factor that only a few golf personalities have taken the time to ponder. The truth is that a lot of golf fans do not care about the tours. All they want is to see the best golfers compete against each other. This new verdict from the arbitration hearing means that this might never be possible again. Matthew Schwartz, counsel to Live Golf, said the procedural opinion of DP World Tour's arbitration body had failed to reasonably address why competitive forces must be upheld. By punishing players for playing golf, the DPWT is seeking to unreasonably control players and it is the sport and fans that suffer. There are no winners, Schwartz added. Well, the good news is that there is still hope for the Live Golfers to participate in the Ryder Cup. Keith Pelly stated that aside from being a member of the DP World Tour, there were other criteria to feature in the Ryder Cup. I think it'll be tougher for them, Live players, to get in through the qualifying way if we indeed pose sanctions. They're still very eligible if they qualify, or if Luke Donald feels that they need to be on the team, Pelly said. 
While speaking with Sky Sports, Petty claimed that the Live Golf defectors were not necessarily banned from joining the biennial contest. We are not banning these players. In order to play in the Ryder Cup, you have to be European and you have to be a member of the DP World Tour. And there are two ways to get in. You can qualify and there are six qualifying spots. Or Luke Donald has six picks totally at his discretion. They are still very eligible if they qualify or if Luke feels that they need to be on the team. Unlike what we are already acquainted with in the PGA and DP World Tours, the Live Golf consists of 48 players. These players are divided into teams with captains. For the first two rounds, the best two-stroke play scores will count for each team. For the third and final round, the best three scores will count, with the lowest overall team score after 54 holes being named the team winner. The format changes in the team championship, which is a seeded four-day, four-round, match-day knockout tournament. The top four seeds automatically receive a bye through the first round, with the remaining eight teams playing against each other to see who reaches the quarterfinals. This is how Liv has been able to shake the golf world in such a short while. The Saudi-funded series has more than enough money to go around. The first seven events all have a price purse of $25 million, with $20 million being distributed between the 48-man field and the remaining $5 million being shared between the top three teams at the end of the week. The winner will receive $4 million, or £3.2 million, considerably more than the $2.7 million awarded to Scotty Scheffler for his victory at the Masters, and Justin Thomas secured for his PGA Championship success, while every player is guaranteed at least $120,000 for just completing 54 holes. At the end of every event, there will be an individual champion. Then, the top three players for the season will go home with a $30 million fund distributed among them. The prize purse doubles for the season finale in Miami and sees $50 million allocated between each of the 12 four-man teams. Each player receives a 25% cut of team earnings, with $16 million awarded to the winning team and $1 million for the team finishing 12th. Live Golf has come to stay. Change is the only thing constant in life, and this is what the golf world must embrace. Greg Norman has openly declared that the breakaway circuit has come to stay. Norman said, The players love it. The fans are loving it. Even the media are starting to grab hold of the reality of it all. It's way better than I anticipated. Speaking about possible peace talks, Norman was of the view that there was always room for all the parties involved to sit down and discuss. I quite honestly think the ball is in their court. It's not in ours. We've tried. We've tried on numerous occasions. Every institution would be a benefactor. Live is here to stay. We are not going anywhere. Will any of the Live golfers be selected by Luke Donald to participate in the Ryder Cup? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.